But we're continuing our study on the human spirit. Is the human spirit eternal? The struggle to awaken the human spirit. I'm going to get into a debate I had with an individual that never finished it. Just went away with whatever they believed and I left it at that. Here's a warning. The day the spirit goes silent. When the weeping of the spirit grows silent, because it is weeping, I tell you. The human spirit is weeping. I brought it out in one of these videos. The cry and weeping of the human spirit, you can hear it. When the weeping of the spirit grows silent, the weeping of the flesh will increase. Your trials and tribulation will increase. If you cut yourself off from the human spirit and don't realize that God's your Father, uh, the day the spirit goes silent is the day that the Father gives you over to a reprobate mind, the carnal mind, and not the mind of a human spirit awakened by the Holy Spirit. People probably get tired of me hearing me say that. It has to be said that way. Reprobate defined is our using the mind for that which it was not intended to be used for. The carnal mind. We're not sufficient ourselves to evaluate anything, but we constantly do it. You're supposed to take this carnal, fallen mind and surrender it to the mind of Christ that's in you, quicken the human spirit by the Holy Spirit, and hear him from your Father. Let him teach you. I mean, this has come out in every one of these videos. I've said this over and over and over again. This was to be surrendered by its, from its fallen condition to a mind that seeks to deliver us. He wants to deliver the soul of intellect, emotion, but takes the act of a free will, be, at least be willing. I don't understand it. Just be willing. You don't need to understand this. This carnal mind would never, if I try to explain it for you, a carnal mind would never understand it. Just say, I'm willing. Then wait to your spirit that you may not even know is there. And somewhere down the road here, days, weeks, months, maybe years, depends on how wrapped up in this world you are, he's going to speak to you. And you're going to know that it ain't your thoughts. It's not coming up out of your carnal mind. Strange thoughts are coming to you from your Father. This mind is the same mind that was in Jesus Christ our Lord. While in the mood of a son of man like us, yet not fallen, virgin born, to the womb of Mary, called in Scripture the second Adam, who corrected the fall of the first Adam and his wife Eve. He that seeks to save this life, you've heard Jesus say that several times, loses that life being offered. That guy brought him out of here. He's trying to hear. He's one of his reasons for coming here, many reasons, was to let you know that God's your father. He even gave the warning, don't call no man your father. God, you got one. God's your father. A life that is eternal and not temporal Something this fallen mind cannot offer. It can't offer eternal life. It's slowly dying. When it's dying, so goes the body. As Paul says in Romans 8, if you live after the flesh, you're on your way to dying. And we always define the flesh as your particular race, culture, second religious creeds, and your opinion as a male or female. Listen to the world's opinions and ideas. Not consulting God through your quickened human spirit by the Holy Spirit to your Father. You're on your way to dying. You ain't got no answers. You can find out now or you can wait to die. Only by our eternal spirit empowered by the Holy Spirit can we sustain this dying body until the day that we lead this corruptible body called a bio's body to dwell in an incorruptible body prepared for us all before the foundation of this fallen world, allowing this fulfills our Father's promise to save us, spirit, soul, and body, complete, with this completeness locked up in your dormant spirit. Holy Spirit, work it out. You don't have to debate with me. 
I said, I, I'll say so much to some people. I'll, I'll debate to some degree. But at some point, I'll say, go ask your father. You don't, oh, do, what they'll do? You hear the flipping of, of uh, pages in theology books of the teachings of their forefathers, and they won't ask their father. They'll go back to their forefathers. Call no man your father. God will teach you this. God will share it with you. I don't need to share it with you. I'm only sharing what God told me. It took me, what, 50 years out of my 74 years in this world now. He didn't begin to touch this. Wishing I could have seen this 50 years ago, that God was my father. And always was my father, eternally begotten in Christ, my father. I didn't know it. Man, you probably don't know now. You're probably scratching your head. What's he talking about? Well, like I'm saying, you got to ask your father or... You can go listen to my videos. This individual I'm going to be talking about here, how I can't listen to your videos. I said, no problem. I said, this, I'll, I'll give you what I can give you in a few paragraphs here. He said, well, you can send me one of your articles. So I did that. You will see what happened. Here's the answer I got from an individual that I asked the question. Is the human spirit eternal? He came up in general conversation. I know not to open this can of worms. Because you ask, you ask the average, go ask your pastor. Go ask your religious friends that you know. Is the human spirit eternal? Watch the answer you get. You know what I got? What answer I get? They said the human spirit is not eternal. It was created. This just came up. No, the guy, what he had to say was pretty good. He had some good teachings, and I liked some of the, the things he shared in these videos. Awesome. But somehow I thought, I used the expression, I guess, in one of my comments into his commentary, one of his videos, that the human spirit is eternal. He objected. I said, no, it's not. It was created. Here's the individual's response. No, I don't believe this human spirit is eternal. God is the only one who is eternal. Everything else has a beginning, including the human spirit. My God. You're a teacher of Israel? Or you're a teacher of the church and you don't know this? It's one of the mysteries. If I get into it, you'll see what I'm saying. Now, I don't believe that the human spirit is eternal. God is the only one who's created. Now, why do they say that? Out of fear of pantheism. And other fears. That why nothing's eternal. Well, you better correct science, because you know what scientists say? That nothing new, nothing new is being created, nothing's being destroyed. They see it as eternal. They don't understand why. It's just changing its form from one degree to another degree, getting less and less and less. It's those things what they call heat, death, die, heat, death. But even in heat, death, they ain't, and it, it's still there, but they ain't got no life to it. It's just lifeless. Nothing's ever destroyed. It just changes its form. You take a log, you burn it, it turns into heat, smoke. It dissipates into the air. It's still there, but it's not in this form it was before. So, I mean, without going all that scientific stuff, they don't know. They know about it, but they, don't, they can't understand how things are eternal. Everything's eternal. They don't understand that. They get in what's called quadrant physics. That's contradiction to everything they've ever thought. They ain't seen the end of this. We ain't seen nothing. That him that thinks he knows anything becomes those those nothing. That we know we know next to God, nothing. Anything that we think we know, we're so far from the truth is unbelievable. Here's my response to him saying that. That individual. I didn't want to use a he or she. It was just an, uh, an individual. Define the I asked, him, asked this per individual to define the term eternal. If the human spirit isn't eternal, what is it? It's eternal. The phone call of mine, not being eternal, denies this. There's a reason I've been coming out here. Man, why, why does the phone call of mine deny the eternality of your human spirit and your eternal sonship? We'll come out here in a minute. Adam could have eternally expressed his being a son of God. We were first to come to the Lord's Adam being sons of God, not sons of men. Adam could have eternally expressed his being a son of God if he had not fallen 
and been barred from the tree of life. See, there's a symbol again. We're going to get in what this tree of life is. His being barred from the tree of life was so that he and all of us would not be trapped in this fallen world, cut off from our Father. God did that. It was a mercy and grace of God. He subjected his world to few too. It's become, I already get ahead of myself. Cut off from our Father. Death was introduced as an exit from this trap. As the Apostle Paul wrote, the world was subjected to death, decay, in hope. Hope seen is not hope. Hope unseen. We're not talking about hope that we know about hope. It's nothing to do with the scene. You don't want to go with hope in the scene. It's, it's coming to an end. It has a beginning as it is. It's going to die and decay. The world was subjected to death, decay, and hope of restoring us back to our Father's original intent, which, if Adam had not fallen, would have been a world without end. He would have went to the tree of life and completed what I call the completing the cycle of expression. The whole two videos on that. Completing the cycle of expression. He came into a, a spirit. He came into a, a created body. Cre the body was created. And the world was created. Not the spirit. The spirit is eternal. Here's an eternal spirit coming into a created body. And that eternal spirit gives it life. A, a life-giving soul, it's called. The soul was nothing more than expression of feelings and thoughts. When act of free will to either express the feelings and thoughts of that human spirit empowered by the Holy Spirit expressing the will of the Father to a spirit, to a life-giving soul, to a body, and to a created world. If he had not fallen, he would, would have, the last step would have been to go to the tree of life and would have gave that body eternal life. And this world would have been under control of the sons of God, not sons of men, which he gave Adam power over land, sea, and air. He, he was to subdue the world, to keep it. It would have been the last forever. Eternal spirits running an eternal world. To a, a mind, surrender to an eternal mind, the mind of Christ in that spirit, mind of the Father, it would have subdued this world and it would have lasted forever. Except the sons of men, you don't see that. Those are men grown, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Not the sons of men. We screwed it all up. All right, so as the Apostle Paul wrote, the world was subject to death, decay, and hope of restoring us back to our Father's original intent, which, if Adam had not fallen, would have been a world without end. Only because of the fall of human, fall of human is this matter of a beginning and an end introduced. There would have been no beginning, no end. You would have just continued, and eternal expression would have no end. You, you, you're continuing, you know? You're expressing an eternal realm into a created material world. It would have lasted forever. God's original intent was our being in a... Original intent was our being in a materially created world to express a world without a beginning or end called the kingdom of God being manifested in the kingdom of heaven on earth. That's what I said. It's very important. You've got to know the difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. The devil's lie led Adam to believe that viva his, his uh, soul, independent from his spirit, and contact with God his Father, he could run this life and this world. Adam thus became only a soul cut off from God, his spirit. He began to die. Cut the spirit off, soul off from the spirit, and it dies. When the soul dies, the body dies. The mind goes, the body goes. Adam thus became only a soul, whereas the second man, Jesus, was a life giving spirit. Got videos on that. Jesus constantly surrendered his soul of how he thought and felt to his spirit in partnership with the Holy Spirit. Jesus accomplished what the first Adam had failed to accomplish. Well, I pose a response, I just said to him, this individual. Now, here's some added thoughts to his matter, not shared to this individual. You'll find out he didn't want to hear it. If anyone believes the human spirit had a beginning, 
the following has to be asked. If you believe that it does have a beginning, then do you believe it has an end? You would say, I received Jesus and I gained the eternal spirit. You can't use the word eternal. Eternal, what's the definition of eternal? Had no beginning, no end. You say it had a beginning. The human spirit had a beginning. So if you believe it has a beginning, do you believe it has an end? Well, they would, they would say, oh, no, it don't have an end. Then they can't call it eternal. Because eternal means it has no beginning or end. Only things eternal never have a beginning or an end. Created things do have a beginning, a time of being expressed, things like the material universe and the human body created from the substance of this material world. Yet, the human spirit was not created. Now catch this. You're dangerously close to believe what the Jehovah Witnesses believe. That the spirit and soul are the same thing, just expressed with different words. And they believe that the soul, they say they use words spirit and soul together, they believe that the soul will be annihilated, become non-existent at death. They don't believe in hell, eternal punishment. They say you just annihilated. They reject the eternal torment of Gehenna, seeing the second death as annihilation. I get into that. <laughs> I may continue to finish that. I'm going to say a few things here. They are wrong. It is written that death and hell are thrown into Gehenna. Think beyond some symbol of Gehenna and a burning dome. They use the word lake of fire. Forget that. Gehenna. Thinking beyond the symbol of Gehenna and a burning dome site in Jerusalem, which Jesus used to illustrate it. There was a fire that never went out, but the fire ain't there no more. So you can say, well, the fires go out hell. No, that was just a it's a bad <laughs> symbol. You can't use that symbol today. A burning dump site in Jerusalem focused on the eternality of this place. Said to be prepared for the devil and his angels, not humanity. I got a whole series of videos on that. Now, if you're following the devil, you'll get to join him. And these disembodied spirits that had left their original habitat in the state, as Jude tells us, I explained this in my video series, Hell is Not Our Home. It was prepared for the devil within. It was never prepared for any human being. Now, if you want to join them, you're going to get to join them. Uh, so I'll see what I mean. I'll start going off on that. Go listen to that video, Hell is Not Our Home. You understand what I mean by everybody gets a body. Two resurrections. First resurrection it was for a body, second resurrection for a body. He's not talking about this bios body. He's talking about a Zoe body, an eternal body. God gives you a new body. Now he wants to give you the mind of Christ that's in your spirit, in that soul. And not the soul. You don't want to go to the soul with this limited ideas. I explained this in my video series, Hell is Not Around. I'm not going to do it here. Going on. This individual's avatar had a name, and then he said, so-and-so in Christ. So I had asked him, how long have you been in Christ? So do you believe that before you, I quote, got saved? Do you believe that before you, and I quote, got saved, that you were not in Christ? Only as you received Jesus as your Savior, only then were you placed in Christ. Some place. God. So before that moment in time, you were not in Christ. That's what this guy believed. Um, he's not alone because quite a few people believe that. As you mentioned, only then did you inherit your salvation and gain being in Christ. There's that word inherit. See that word inherit? The word of salvation and the idea of create. That's going to come out here in a minute. We got that all messed up. So you would not believe that you were always in Christ. They don't understand. They don't believe that. Might it just be, now catch this, might it just be that you were unaware of this eternal fact, it being masked over by the fleshly, fallen, secular religious mind. Thus you would not agree with what I'm sharing. 
I wouldn't expect you would agree, being unaware of this eternal fact. You have said that creation had a beginning. Thus, the human spirit also must have a beginning, concluding that it must have been created as the material universe and, and human body was created. Sounds like a Jehovah's Witness. And before this, before its creation was non-existent. So the human spirit was non-existent. You were just a body and a soul. Scripture says without the spirit, you can't sustain this body. How could you even be born? The spirits, the spirits, you got a spirit soul and body. You got them from the get-go, from the very day you hit this planet, the day you come out of mama's womb. You have a spirit, you have a soul, and you have a body. You just cut off. The spirit's dormant. You're not even aware of it. And before its creation was non-existent, kind of like the afterthought of God in eternal time. Oh, how are we going to get this thing to come alive? I'll have to breathe into it some spirit. Give him some life. <sighs> the human spirit. As I shared in another article I sent to you, is God as dependent upon his creation as the creation is upon him? Which reveal how there are those that think God was lonely and feel his loneliness. First created the son, which we don't believe, which I do not accept. I know he don't accept that, and you do I. That's the Jehovah's Witness. They think that the Son of God, Jesus, was created. The Son of God was not created. The Son of God is eternally begotten. We can't understand that. How can he be eternally begotten? That's the old English word for being born. To beget, begot. Old English term. The Son of God is eternally begotten. Yet there are those that believe God got lonely and then created the Son and then created angels for the sun to play with. Crazy ideas. They're eternal. Here's this individual's response. Like I'm saying, this is part I added. I don't think you ever heard this part. No, you never heard that part. Here's his response to that first part. Our human spirit is a vessel. So you're saying that the human spirit is empty. Until the Holy Spirit comes into it. There had better be some kind of light there. The Holy Spirit empowers that life. So understand that. Our human spirit is a vessel to contain God's spirit as life. And then he uses Zechariah chapter 12. says, God laid the foundations of the earth and stretched the heavens and formed the spirit of man in him. See that word there, form? Philippians chapter 2. Stress that real quick about the word form. Who being in the form of God, thought not be robbery to be equal to God, but took upon him the form of a servant and became obedient unto death. That's Jesus, the Son of God, becoming a Son of Man. Who being in the form, the word form, there's no Greek word to defi- express that in the English. That Greek word form we can't express it in English. There's no English word for it. The closest word they can get is essence. Essence. Who being in the essence of God? It's saying he was in the essence of God. He's the second person of the Trinity. And he leaves that second position. And we can't understand how could he leave and God still be God. God is still God. In the essence of that, in the essence, you see Father Son, Holy Spirit. Anything in that essence is God. People can understand that. I'm saying you don't understand a lot of things. You're going to come up with stupid ideas like this. It forms the spirit of man in him. Well, I'm going to be getting into this in a minute. It comes out here, down here, John chapter 17. We're in the essence of God. We're in the form of God. He don't understand that. He he, he sees form as, as, as like when God created the world. So if he created the earth and, and the world, then he, and he created the body, then he had to create the spirit. Now the spirit was what gave that body life. Make it a living soul. So I got other videos to bring this out. I'm not going to try to do it here. I'm trying to get through this. And I'm saying it's almost like 
I'm not going to go there. I didn't end up debating one. I just ended it. The spirit of man has the beginning. That's what he says. The tree of life is not the human spirit. Oh, my God. And the human spirit is not God. Oh, God. I'm not saying that. The tree of life represents God himself as life ready to come into man's spirit. When they are joined, they become one spirit, but not before then. <sighs> so I'm saying, I can't, I, how are you going to try to teach a mind? He's pretty well. I'm, I, I know he flips through his theology books, and the theologians would say this. And when they get done, they don't know. Once again, define your term eternal. That's why I said, well, what a, how would he respond? He says, tell him to define the term again, eternal. Scripture uses the old English term of our being begotten in Christ. I got a whole series when the first begotten. Go to that. We think in our natural mind of natural conception of being non-existent until our natural parents had an intimate moment and conceived us. What God begets is as to his nature eternal. Get that? What God begets is as to his nature eternal. When we beget in his fallen nature, it's temporal. Our being begotten in Christ was as those with a deeper understanding of this matter of being begotten, expressing it this way. Now notice this. This is not the cult world. I'm getting this from some brothers in Christ that really understand what they're talking about. And people don't like what they're sharing either. Here's an eternal thought, the ultimate intention of God. God and his eternal desire, eternally desired, to have sons likened to his first eternally begotten son. And in that eternal desire, had those sons after the eternal Im image of his son. I'll correct that real quick. Do my correction here. Image. Eternal image of his son who will be like him, who will be begotten to Christ. Now here, I got videos on this. Comes up in I believe a couple other videos before I put this one out. In this series. Is the human spirit eternal? Comes out in John chapter seventeen. What I just said there is in John seventeen. But if you read it from the King James, which I have to read it because they don't want to hear anything but the King James. But if you get into a deeper Greek of this, not even in the deeper Greek of that, you get into the totality of the overall purpose and will of God. John 17 is expressing this, which confuses the carnal mind. The carnal mind can't see this. You read John 17 with a carnal mind, you're not going to see this. But you got your mind of your spirit that knows this. It's going to say amen. It's going to agree. John 17, verse 21. That they all may be one, Jesus speaking, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us. One in us. That the world may believe that thou hast sent me, and the glory which thou gavest me I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, Thou and me, that they may be perfect and one, and that the world may know that Thou hast sent me and has loved them as Thou hast loved me. Ponder that verse and pray about it, and then don't go to your theology books, independent from theology books, and asking some minister or some person who has no idea what this means either, Ask your father and wait if it takes a day, a week, month, if it takes years. It took me years to see this. And I thank God I waited and asked. I kept on asking, seeking. And I find, and the Lord, the door opened up. It's my father, Abba, Father. 
So I lost my place where they leave off by here. A single paragraph here. Or even by referring to the videos, which they, the individual didn't want to listen to the videos, that I've been called to share. I take this even deeper. As the Apostle Paul, the Apostle Paul, shared of his doing a work in his day of sharing this matter of being eternally begun, where you think I got it from, which took him 14 years of, this, of the Holy Spirit to undo what the second religious world had fed into his fallen soul and woke his eternal spirit to his eternal Father, the Apostle Paul got to where he could explain this in full. Yet still met with those who couldn't understand what he was sharing. As Paul, I mean Peter said, our brother Paul had things to say that are hard to be understood. There are those who take what he shares from the modern Christ that's in him as they do with the rest of the scripture in the Old Testament to their own destruction. I personally have had 73 years in this life's experience and it's taken the Holy Spirit to undo what has been done to my soul for my secular life and religious life to awaken my human spirit as long, as long, if not longer, as long, if not longer, because of the increase of knowledge, TV, and computer, and God, that gets fed into our fallen corn wines today. Knowledge has increased. I personally only share what's taken me years to see, and at this point in my in time, don't desire to debate this eternal fact. If you don't get it, then you don't get it. Then you have to go off your knuckle here for me. You have to wait till your father. I've had it have had it in videos and writings. But beyond this, I know that it is that it is in your human spirit. It's in this individual human spirit. It's in all of us. The totality of the wisdom and knowledge of God is hidden in Christ, and Christ is in us. The human soul, the human, uh, the human spirit, not the soul. The soul is God surrendered. They get that. Let go of what it thinks it is. If you think you know anything, become you don't know nothing. It's all about the soul. Apart from him, you you don't know nothing. If you would go to the human spirit, you don't need be me to teach you. Keep sharing, as I see that you are. He, now he's doing that. He had a good website. He had some good videos, and I liked it. Until I come out and said this word, that the human spirit is eternal, that's when this debate started. He's never seen it before. Well, maybe, maybe he will. So I just let it go there. God bless you. I left it. Here's his response back, this individual. I know you don't want to go back and forth. That's what I just told him that. I know you don't want to go back and forth, but you did say define eternal. Well, he did, but here he's going to try to define it again. My understanding of eternal is that it's without beginning, without source, out of, out of time. We inherit. See, now here's this word. See this word, inherit. I'm going to be touching that here in a minute. His idea of the word inherit. We inherit eternal life. Good God. Well, let me keep, keep on going. We inherit eternal life, which was what with the Father in the beginning. Yeah, I was too. I was in there with him. I'm one of his sons. And through Christ, I inherit. Through Christ. We get this inherit through be our being begotten in Christ. If you're not begotten in the family, you ain't going to get nothing. That'd be like saying my neighbor's going to get some of the will of my dad. But he's not part, no, he's not his son. I'm his son. Well, there you go. I'll, I'll get in that here in a minute. When we uh, inherit that life, we become one with one who is. <laughs> Good God. But we understand, but we ourselves have a beginning being created by God. He's still, he's still hung up on that. Being created by God. Now, yeah, you're very close to being a Jew witness, man. They're going to stump your band someday. They believe that the Son of God was created. Well, I mean, how, oh, I'd like to see him go debate with him. Well, he probably would have a debate. And uh, let, let me go on. So I responded back to I sent you an email. I did. I said I wanted to, it could turn into 400 posts back and forth. Now, it's hard to do. 
and a commentary. I sent you an email. We can go from there, or leave it at that. Briefly, your definition of eternal is correct. Anything with no beginning or end, considered outside of created time, with an eternal source, unlimited, would be considered eternal. Had Adam and Eve not fallen, I catch this, been cut off from their eternal spirit, this could have been a world without end, with an unlimited source of supply, eternal. They would have manifest sons of God that were eternal. They could have kept this world as instructed before this fall, and the world would not be moaning and groaning as it does, waiting for the manifestation of the God's sons. It does. Earth moaning and groaning, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. They end up getting sons of men, which is messing it all up. Our fall mind blocks our spirit's potential, and we live according to our fleshly carnal mind, flesh, thus are on our way to dying, physically, mentally. Only the human spirit, in partnership with the Holy Spirit, has the solution to our fallen condition. Jesus Christ gained this for us. So if you so desire, we can go deeper with emails. Well, this ended. <laughs> As they never responded back, I sent him a whole one of my articles and and never responded back about it. Well, this ended with this individual not responding to my email. And the one article that I mentioned, I did send this individual. Now, I mean, <laughs> I got about 15 videos on this. And many articles? Oh, unlimited. I could write a book. The most wicked thing, now catch this point. This is something I just got this morning as I'm going through this, setting this up to make this video. The most wicked thing the devil could do would be to cut you off from knowing that your human spirit is eternal. Revealed by the Apostle Paul, by revealing the mystery of godliness. My series of mysteries brings this out. See, I'm saying, I'm saying that, I'm, oh God, people are not going to say that because they never listen to those videos. Well, I'm just going to read this. Let me start over and read this whole phrase again without stopping. The most wicked thing the devil could do would be to cut you off from knowing that your human spirit is eternal, revealed by the Apostle Paul, by revealing the mystery of godliness, which is the revealing of our sonship and our being eternally begotten in the first eternally begotten Son of God and our having our spirits when awakened to the eternal fact crying, Abba, Father. The devil's done that. Paul revealed it. Remember in the Old Testament, it was a mystery, hidden, something waiting to be revealed. Christ came, reveals it. The Father loves you. Once you come back, he's forgiven you. He's offered me up as a sacrifice for your sin. Come back. You're welcome home. He forgives you. It's a free gift. He's sacrificing himself to the Son. Come home. Come back. Sons, come home. Oh, God. All my other videos bring that out. I, I hesitate and bring it out. I, I would have gone into another long spiel here to get you to see that. So all he does now is hide that mystery revealed. It was hidden before. Now that it's revealed, the devil, all he can do now is block you from ever seeing this mystery. Your sons of God. You become sons of men. You were cut off from your father. And that was, David says it. For, for my mother's womb was I conceived in sin, cut off from God, and shaped in the iniquity of my parents. And there are fallen ideas of who we are, who God is, and what life's all about. And trying to do that with a fallen mind, thinking they're sufficient in themselves to evaluate anything. Even reading the Bible, independent from God, you're never going to understand a book. You can come up with all kinds of crazy ideas. You see with all the different denominations, opinions, ideas. If you don't wait on your father, you got to hear it from your father.